morning, buenos dias. It's Tuesday, May 13th, the second day of our trek, and we're currently camping between um, in a canyon between two beautiful mountains, and we have beautiful views of uh, glaciers behind us. The plan for today is we're going to be summiting the top of the mountain. We're going to um, get to about 14,000 feet in about three hours, so we're halfway to the top. And then we're going to go down just a little bit before having lunch. And then the rest of the, the day and the trek should be a steady decline. So this is going to be probably the hardest part of the trek when you do it um, last after, or yesterday afternoon and this morning. So we're, pretty, we're looking forward to some downhill. It's been pretty treacherous <laughs> in a good way. Well, here's the top of the mountain that we're going to this morning. And we're going to take some form of a trail from the camp where we are now and uh, that's going to be the bulk of the ascension today. Here's our breakfast tent, our dining tent here, this red one. So we're at uh, 3,900 meters and I'll put the, the altitude in feet right here. Uh, but we're going to go up to the highest point on the trek and it's 13,750 roughly. Feeling the altitude for sure and the weight of the packs is there and uh, you know it's a cool morning. The views are pretty awesome. You can see these giant mountains and this fog is rolling in pretty quick. It rained all night so be prepared for rain. It feels great to wake up at sunrise, walk all day, and then go to bed at sunset. Despite being a bit uncomfortable sleeping on the hard ground, I feel well rested and full of energy. Waking up in such a beautiful place makes me feel grateful and excited for the day's adventure. Yeah, like this. That is for apple or protector. Yeah. Apple. Coca leaves are still widely cultivated in Peru, and they are used for a variety of purposes. For details on the historical and current uses of coca in Peru, click the link on the video right now. I will give you a link to get back here at the end. So I have the coca up here, and uh, no, don't freak out, it's not a drug, it's just a plant, and it tastes a lot like tea. It's kind of like green tea or something, a little bitter. It's like if you were just going to eat the tea leaves raw. But uh, they say it helps with altitude sickness, and it gives you a little boost, and it's not nearly as concentrated as the white powder cocaine that you might be thinking of, even though they do make it from this. That's like way more concentrated. I'll research it and see how many times, maybe a hundred times or more. But uh, yeah, it's not bad. Here's that mountain that we're working towards. We're a lot closer now. It's coming into view. How are you feeling? Pretty good. A little more winded than yesterday. Yeah. As we go over 12,000 feet. Um, I think we're getting close to 13. As we get to 13. Starting to feel the high altitude, yeah. but feeling okay. Not bad, huh? No. Yes, yeah. Can you see this? There's the nose. See, and then the, and then the mouth the and head. stuff. This is like where the forehead would be. No, the we will go off the, um, to the That's why it's called Dead Woman Pass. Head? It's because it yeah. yeah. looks like yeah. a woman laying down yeah. facing the sky. Yeah. We made it. Yeah. Um, we're at the top of the nipple. <laughs> the Dead Woman Pass? Dead Woman Pass. It's up in the um, just here. We're about at 13,750 feet. And it's the highest elevation on the trek. So from here it should be easy going. Pretty much. Yep. Look at this view. There's where we came up. This is our trail. You can see people coming up here. Right there. The people here, this is not an old Inca trail, it's been restored, but they literally just carved these stone steps or set the stones themselves straight into the mountainside, which to me just sounds like an insane amount of work. So it's very impressive. There's Wayabamba down at the bottom where we came from yesterday. Here we come up to the other side of Dead Woman Pass. This is so beautiful, eh? See what we see. Oh wow. That is quite side. a sight. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Some crazy mountains. Yeah. There's one line. If you see the trail going off 
Oh, yeah, yeah way so we'll go down, down there. the bottom and then we'll go up. All the way right yeah. there. I see it. We're gonna take that trail off. Let's get in the second pass. Oh, fun. Okay. Nice. You love how the light is hitting those mountains. Yeah. So cool. I uh, wanted to give you a follow-up on the coca leaves. So about 30 to 40 minutes, I kept them in my mouth. And uh, I didn't really feel any serious like impact like you would think or anything. It was kind of just a mild, uh, just kind of wake, woke me up and made me feel alert. Um, it didn't feel like coffee. It didn't give me a headache. It didn't make me dehydrated. It just felt like I was just a little bit more present. So I think that's kind of cool because they say that it helps for altitude and it helps for digestion and it felt a lot cleaner than things like coffee or tea which tend to make me feel dry or like kind of a little bit of problems in my stomach so you know I definitely think that it's uh, good in the form that we had it I don't know about turning it, turning it into cocaine but yeah not bad. Water is present along every part of the trail. It's clear that the Incas channeled it both for their own use and to prevent erosion. The amount of manpower and engineering skill that went into building these roads and cities is unfathomable, especially considering that the Ingas did not have the wheel, horses, or iron tools. So since we passed over Dead Woman Pass, we've been walking down the whole way, which is a really nice break from all of the up we've been doing, but it's definitely hard on the knees and a little bit uh, different muscle groups that we're using. We're walking down this staircase, which has been almost the entire way, which you can see has been made. and is uh, really convenient um, and also just baffling that people took all the time and the effort to put these stones here. Uh, we're getting really close to our lunch spot and then we're going to go back up again and down again to our camp. There you can see our second day lunch spot and after that we're going to be taking this trail which goes up the mountain and you can see it going up. We're going to get to this Inca site and that's the halfway point of the next up part. And we're going to go all the way up over that pass. So, not really looking forward to that. It was puzzling at first as to why people would choose to settle such difficult terrain. But while steep, these mountains are extremely fertile and well irrigated. The difficulty of moving through here can serve as an advantage in terms of protection. The Incas conquered many smaller, established communities, and it's likely that those communities considered these factors when choosing their locations. We've made it to our lunch spot, and uh, we couldn't have had a better view. We have uh, on our left, or your right, we have a waterfall that's been flowing beside our path the entire time, and then on the um, on the right, or your left, there's a beautiful valley of montañas and other things. Here we are in the kitchen. This is Cristobal, the chef. Yes. Cristobal is cooking some chicken soup and uh, a chicken stir fry with quinoa. Yeah. And uh, I see they're carrying these all these pots and a two burner stove here. And somebody's carrying this propane. Who's carrying this? Quien lleva ese? Quien lleva. Quien está cargando el gas? Yo. Bonifacio is carrying the propane. Pesa mucho? See, he says it's heavy. Yeah, I believe him. So, <laughs> yeah, you can see they have a pretty good setup here for cooking, and we have uh, lots of really good meals. So, extremely grateful. Gracias. Okay. Ustedes. Tigers. Tigres. El bistro Cristobal. El bistro. Yeah. Okay, it's lunch ready. Gracias. Cristobal has prepared a lot of food for us. <clears throat> we have here a pasta dish. We have here um, a chicken dish with vegetables and also a quinoa dish and we also just had soup so no need to worry if you come on this tour you will have plenty of food to eat. So here we go up the next incline from yeah, lunch up. spot and uh, you can see all these stairs are between 12 and 18 inches and uh, 
you know, it pretty much goes all the way up to the top. Look at me. Here you can see the waterfalls we were passing on the way down to lunch. There's two of them. And then if you zoom out, you can get a real sense of the type of terrain we're covering. We came down through this valley, right down there and down to our lunch spot. And now we're all the way up here, which is uh, considerably higher already. And we're making a, a lot of vertical progress and very little horizontal progress. Here we can see a view of Rune Kurakai from the top. We're on our way to the second mountain pass. And we caught a little bit of rain, so you can see our rain gear in action. We've got rain jackets, pack covers, and all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, so one thing that I just want to reiterate is that if you're planning on coming here, you really should be in good physical condition. Uh, we're just going up and down constantly, and it's uh, extremely difficult. And that's something that the tour guide websites and the books don't really mention. And I understand why, because they're trying to sell treks and spots on on the you know the path and it's how they make money so they wouldn't want to tell you not to come but seriously you know make sure that you're fit and if you don't think that you're fit enough then the first thing you can do is hire a personal porter and then the second thing obviously is you got to train because um, we're from boulder so we live at high altitude and we're constantly going into the mountains so we're used to high altitude but going up these steep mountains at 13,000 feet all day is um, definitely a, more of a challenge than anybody says. So be prepared. Here we have nearly reached the top of the second pass. And you can see over here in the distance the pass, the Dead Woman's Pass, where we came from earlier. And we walked all the way down this trail. Well, the trail's in there. There we go. And uh, down to somewhere down there. And then we came back up this other side, and now we are at the top of the other side of this giant valley. And these mountains, you still can't even see the top. I've never seen the top yet. Here we are, looking down the other side of the second pass, and uh, got a cool little cave steps in here. This trail c continues to impress me and look very cool. Watch out your head. Guys here, okay. don't break the Don't break rocks. the rock. <laughs> <laughs> this is like something you see in a movie. This is really cool. Many terrain features like this are only partly natural. The Incas definitely shaped these stones to suit their needs. Our guide suggests that one method they used was to chisel holes along a fault line. They would then fill those holes with wood, and by soaking the wood, they created tension along the fault. They could then hit the rock very hard, and it would break off. I just had a bar. It was delicious. <laughs> a bar, huh? Yes. What kind of bar? A Luna bar. Yeah? Made for women. We like Luna bars. <laughs> so if you're watching this Luna bar, we would love to receive cases on a semi-regular basis. <laughs> yeah, it's super steep. Going down the same kind of steps we just came up. To illustrate how quiet the trail is, I did not lower the volume on this clip. And then once in a while you just be walking along and then you see something like that. One Inca side. Yeah. The second one. Yeah. We got there, guys. Well, we are currently at um, Sayamaka, meaning um, an inaccessible place in Quechua. And um, we have a great viewing point here. We're gonna start walking there soon. And we can also see our campsite. So if you look there, that's our campsite we're hiking to today. So we still have a bit of an incline to do after we visit the, the ruin. And then here we are at the ruin. Quite a nice view. In places, the trail is hewn straight into a cliff. Here we go, up to Sayat Smarka. Sayat Smarka. Here we go up the stairs. It's a lot nicer without the pack. We left it down there. And uh, these stairs are very steep, which is probably why they called it the inaccessible place.
We have almost arrived at the second camp. We are back in the rainforest. All right. Three days, Sr. Mateo. We made it. Day two. Done. <laughs> yeah. Guys, this is your tent for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching. The next video covers our third and final day of the trek to Machu Picchu. Be sure to find my packing video and the video of Machu Picchu itself. If you'd like regular updates about my travel videos, hit the subscribe button below.